Hey, it's Michael Eisenbarth here with the Omega High School Media Squad, and today we have a few <coughs> interviews for you. The first interview is myself interviewing Angie Savage, the coordinator of the 2016 Spring Fling. Hey, it's Michael Eisenbarth here with the Omega High School Media Squad, and today I'm here with Angie Savage, the head coordinator of the 2016 Spring Fling. Now, the Spring Fling is put on every year by the Omega Pass or Organate organization which stands for parents and teachers helping students so Angie how many years has the past group been doing this event um, I'm not exactly sure the number but I believe it's been at least four years and to all our viewer, viewers unfamiliar with the spring fling could you give us a quick summary of what the spring fling is about um, yes it's a fundraiser for our PAS group but more than anything it's just a carnival at the end of the year to get um, all of the kids and families together, um, just kind of a last party at the end of the year. And uh, what kind of activities will you guys be having this year? Um, we have carnival games, we're going to be having a duck pond, um, a ring toss, a bear walk, um, football throw, um, and then several other games. I believe there will be face painting, just kind of typical carnival games. Alright, and uh, what is the cost of this event and the uh, age, kind of the age range? Well, the age range, it's geared, um, the games are obviously geared more towards grade school, but we invite any age to attend. Um, and then the cost, uh, this year we're doing it a little bit different. We're selling punch cards for a dollar, and those give them, um, those give the kids ten games. There's ten punches on each card. And then at each game, they will collect tickets, um, and then they can redeem those for prizes at the end. All right, and um, lastly, um, are you guys doing a silent auction this year at the event? Or? We, we are. Um, before, we've had an actual auction where things were auctioned off. This year, we're doing it, again, a little bit different, and we're going to have a silent auction. Um, we've asked all of the grade school classes, K through 6, to put together a basket, a themed basket, and then those will be placed on display and be placed on a silent auction at the spring fling. I know some of the baskets so far um, are a sporting basket, a uh, baking basket, um, there's an ice cream sundae basket, um, and a candy bar basket. All right, and lastly, what is the date of the spring fling? I believe it's May 10th. Thank you for that interview, Michael. Next, we have Adam Cope interviewing the art teacher, Mrs. Crokin. Hello, my name is Adam Cope with the Onega Media Squad, and today I'm here with Mrs. Krogman, the art teacher. So, Mrs. Krogman, could you give us a short rundown on art club here at Onega? Art club consists of those students who are in uh, the art programs. Uh, it's usually middle school through high school. Those students are active in collaborating together on projects. When they're working on certain projects in school, they help each other out, and commonly we try to go to um, league and regional competitions together as, as a club. Okay, um, league was not too far back. Uh, it was March uh, 26th, I believe, up in Han Hanover, Kansas, up on the state line. Okay, how did you guys do there? They did, uh, the students did really well, and um, because I was out part of the year for five or six weeks for uh, recovery on breaking a leg and so through that time I conferenced with students and did uh, image takes, they did photographs of their images and I, I, I conferenced with them over the phone. So when we went to league back in March, I felt that they did very, very well because being gone that amount of time, their work was still up to standard and passed. So we, uh, Caitlin Chess, no, Caitlin Chestnut took second place on her drawing, graphite drawing, and Belinda Ames, um, Tess Fairbanks, and one other student took fourth or honorable mention on their graphite. So, so they did really well. I was really pleased. So. Better than I can do. Oh wait a minute! I remember you doing very well at the contest. So. Okay. Um. At an art contest like this, is there anything specific that the judges look for? The judges commonly look for, um, their, their standards are as high as my standards in the classroom. So we have a standard of excellence to try to, to reach in the classroom, which you well remember. 
Um, so judges are always constantly looking at technique and how technique is used and originality. So they really focus on those things when, when you go to contest. Okay. Um, you mentioned regionals. That was this past week, right? Yes, that was at Highland Community College. Uh, there were, I think, I believe about 32, 30, 32 schools that competed. All from all over Northeast Kansas, all the way down to uh, past Topeka, Lawrence, Kansas City, uh, out west a little bit. So we had a good number of students there this year, and um, it's always it's always a lot of fun, and it's such a great learning environment for our students to go to competitions like this, especially regional, because they come in contact with other students professors at the college level. So there's a lot of networking going on and new friendships are made, which I know you made several <laughs> friendships going to regional. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, a good, it's a good event to go to because they get to learn other things from the workshops at regional. Did uh, your students place better there than they did at least? Yes, they did. Uh, the students who placed at regional in, last week uh, was um, it was Tess Fairbanks, uh, Caitlin Chestnut, uh, Belinda Ames uh, placed uh, fourth, or honorable mention. And we had a Michael Rogenkamp who placed first with artistic achievement. And what is particularly special about these students and the number of students who attended overall, Onega placed up in, uh, up in the 7% of all the students who participated, so that's a big deal. Yeah. It's a huge deal. Did you have any expectations of your students? No, uh, my, expecta my expectations are always high, and that is always you know, the, the standard that they present their, mater their artwork in, how they present it, uh, technique, following technique, making sure they get that technique down. And uh, they did very well. I was really, really pleased with them. So 7% is a big deal. <laughs> um, was there any specific pieces that you were looking forward to seeing how they did? Well, I was really looking forward to see how the students who placed at regional with fourth, how they placed at, no, how they placed at league and how, and how they would then place at regional. So I know the students went back over some of their pieces and tweaked them and brought some of that, brought up more of that technique, changing values in, in the graphite, making sure they have a wide array of how the, the graphite's applied with you know value changes in it, and uh, they worked hard on those, to, you know, getting them ready to present one last time, and they did well. I think they did really well. It's uh, the judging was fairly consistent at regional. That's so, good. Yeah, it, it, they were always consistent at regional. So even though I might have been a little disappointed at league, but uh, for artworks overall at league. There were things that I shouldn't have gotten some stuff, but all right. Well, well, sounds like a lot of fun. It uh, is. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for that interview, Adam. And that's all we have for today's episode.